Hi. Okay, welcome back. And we're going to be covering the fourth module of nine modules of the course Revit 2024 Level 1. And in this module, we're going to be looking at creating model elements. <coughs> Excuse me. So before we kick off, let's look at the various disciplines and the main ribbon tabs that we'll be focusing on for this module. So we are working with the example project that um, is part of the data set that um, ships with the course content. And in the previous exercise, we looked at creating grids, setting up levels, and setting up the project options so that we can start modeling our ground floor and first floor little apartment model that we've got here. So these are the floor plans. We're going to be building our Revit model off of this. Some of the dimensions here are quite rudimentary, so we will be approximating this to some extent, but we'll try and keep it as close as possible. We remember that when we created these grids, these dimensions that we've got here are internal dimensions, so we'll need to incorporate that into our planning when we start developing our model. <clears throat> okay, so before we kick off, so on the ribbon, we've got several tabs, of course, um, each of them containing components and commands that are related to a specific discipline. We're going to be focusing mostly on the architecture tools, but also note that there are structure-specific tools that we will be tapping into a little bit, for example, when we create foundations, if we want to create structural truss systems, or if we want to create structural columns and beams and structural framing components. <clears throat> There's also a, spe a special steel connection um, ribbon menu that we can use for steel connections. And then there's a systems ribbon where we can access MEP components, those being mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. There's also a massing and site component in the ribbon that we use for creating terrain and mass elements. Uh, mass elements are volumetric components that we create for planning volumes and converting that into, into objects such as walls or floors or roofs or curtain wall systems. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. So from the architecture tab, you can see we've got walls, we've got doors, windows. We can place families, which I'm going to show you. We can create architectural columns and architectural floors. From the structure tab, we see we've got beam systems, so structural framing. We've got structural walls. We've got structural columns, structural floors, trusses, braces, beam systems, foundations, rebar, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The component placement here and the grid placement in the structures tab is exactly the same as the one in the architecture tab. So they're just replicated for convenience. But if I created a component from the architecture tab or a grid from the architecture tab or a level, it's exactly the same as doing it from the structure tab. In the in the past, Revit used to be split into three different versions. So for every year they had a Revit, there would be a Revit architecture, a Revit structure, and a Revit MEP. Later on, the Autodesk decided to combine all of this into one platform so that you only need one software package to be able to cover all the various disciplines, which makes it a lot more convenient. Um, but that means that there's some duplication of commands and functions. But that does not relate to all of them, however. For columns and floors, for example, if you create an architectural column or an architectural floor, it's not the same as a structural column or a structural floor slab. OK, so these structural components has got some additional information attached to them that allows for connecting to structural analysis software. So they've got an analytical component associated with them, which are not present, which is not present in the architectural components. OK, you can, however, convert architectural columns or architectural floors into structural floors later on if you decided to do so. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to affect us much for this module, but it's just good to know and understand this. And then on the systems, um, which we're not going to be using too much um, today, but in the following courses we will. But from systems, we can create ducting um, and HVAC systems for air conditioning systems and the like. We can place mechanical components and mechanical equipment. We can create some plumbing and piping systems here plumbing fixtures, sprinkler systems, and then there's a whole bunch of tools specifically related to electrical fixtures and electrical equipment and systems within the model. These are usually handled and owned and developed by discipline-focused teams. 
Um, but for our exercise, we're just going to be looking at the architecture and structured tools for the model that we're going to be building. Okay, so that gives us a bit of background and uh, around these different disciplines and what they do. And what we're going to start off with, with is creating the architectural walls. So we're going to use the wall tool and we're going to use the family type selector here to select the wall type. And then we're going to be specifying the top and bottom level constraints. And we're going to be drawing those lower lines of the walls in indicating the interior of the wall because we said that these grids that we create these dimensions were the inner or inside dimensions. Okay. So when I click on the wall tool here, you'll see that the contextual ribbon, first of all, appears. And from my draw panel, I can choose to draw in lines, rectangles, polygons, circles, arcs, or ovals, or whatever it is that I want to use to define my wall. We're just going to use the default, which is normal lines, so a start and end point. And then before I start drawing or drafting, I would like to specify my top and bottom constraints. Now, in the previous exercise, we set up our levels here in our elevation view. So we've got level one, two, and three. And we know that for the exterior walls, that they should go all the way from level zero up to the top constraint, which is going to be level two. So those are continuous walls, and they're going to span across the two floors. So going all the way from the bottom here to the top, connecting to the roof. OK, we don't have any cross sections here. and We don't know exactly what the roof looks like, but that doesn't matter because we'll just assume that this is a um, semi-flat roof sitting across here, mono pitched, and we'll just model that in based on our best assumption. OK, so now we've set up the base constraint. The command is still active, of course. We've set up the base constraint, um, the base offset. I'm going to change this now, and I'm going to make this 750 millimeters below level one. And the reason for that is, is that walls don't necessarily stop when it hits the ground. It actually goes to below the ground um, where it's got a foundation. In New Zealand, we probably don't use strip footings too much for foundations. We'll probably have piles and raft foundations. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're just going to be modeling a normal strip foundation footing underneath that wall later on. For now, we're just going to make it so that it's 750 millimeters below level zero. And if I forget to do that, it's always easy to come back and change that again, just like we did in the test drive module in the beginning. So don't worry too much about that. Just set up level zero and level two. And then we can start to draw. Now, one more thing. Currently, my location line is set to the wall center line. This is probably something I might want to change. And I'm going to say, no, we actually want the finish face interior because I know that those dimensions are inside dimensions. And when I draw my wall, I want to make sure that they sit on the outside of the grids because that is where those dimensions are taken. And I selected the wrong intersection. I started here from grid line 1A intersection, and actually that sits over there. So I need to start here from 2A. Remember, when we um, planned this, I went A, B, C, D. But then when we started modeling this in Revit, I, I swapped this around so that A is at the top. OK, so anyway, that's where we are. So we're going to start drawing in our wall outer lines here. This is the main structural load bearing wall. Um, it's an architectural wall, so you know, don't get confused by me saying it's a structural load bearing wall. It is a structural load bearing wall, but we're not using the structural components to model that because um, those are reserved for things like concrete walls and walls with analytical components. In this case, the wall that we're using is the default one in the template. And just to show you which one this is, this is the one that I've got selected. It's got multiple layers here with a brick. Um, face at the outside and then it's got layers on the inside if we want to look at those layers we can see we've got a finish brick layer there then we've got this thermal layer then we've got a concrete layer and then we've got a finished plaster layer again so that is the setup that we've got for this particular wall whether that's the one that they've used originally for this model or not i don't know we're just assuming and modeling accordingly OK, so now that we've got this core wall modeled around here, forget about the windows and the door openings. We're going to deal with them later. We can start looking at the internal walls for um, our ground floor level. OK, so we can see that we've got this staircase slash bathroom washing closet area here. Um, not a bathroom, it's a washing closet only. So we'll model in those walls, and that pretty much covers all of the wall modeling for this level. OK, so we've got 
0.94 there, and this is the grid line that we've created. And we know that we've got grid line three there. We don't have a grid line here for this distance, so we'll need to accommodate for that soon um, after we've placed the main walls. Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna click on the wall tool. Notice that um, I don't click on the drop down here. If I did, these gives me access to either structural walls or wall by face, which are tools that we are not going to cover in this course. Also, you probably saw that a, a dialog popped up to remind me to save because, um, you know, software do crash from time to time. And it is a good idea to save at regular intervals. I'm not too worried about that now, so we'll just continue. Okay. I'm going to select, we had an exterior wall here. So I'm going to select an interior wall now for this exercise. We can see here we've got an interior wall. Um, I want to select something that is a little bit thinner. So I'm going to be choosing this one here, this partition wall. Or no, let's stick with the interior wall. Okay, we'll use that interior wall. So the one I've got is this one. All right, you can use any wall that you want. Um, and then we're going to start drawing this in. So I'm going to create a wall that goes to grid line C, goes all the way back here to grid line four, and it comes back up there. Okay, so very simple. I select the center. I click here to select the center line again, those intersections back there and back there. Notice as I draw the walls again, you know, Revit already clears those joining lines and creates the joints for us. It knows that these walls don't go all the way up to level two. It only goes up to level one, right? Because it's only from the ground, ground floor to the first floor, not all the way up to the roof. So it knows what the intersection here looks like. And look how really what a good job Revit is doing of joining that geometries there for us. Okay. So here we've got our foyer. We now have created the space here and we've got 0 0.94 meters here for the internal direction. I know that that's where this grid line sits. So I know that this wall is probably in the wrong location and I might have to move that so that this inner face sits there. Okay, that's going to be better. I know also that this wall should probably be um, whether it's inside or outside, I don't know, because if we have 2.94 inner space here and 1.9 inner space there, uh, we'll just assume that it sits on the center of those grids. That's going to be close enough for the purposes of this exercise. Okay, so now we've got the walls. And if we click on this button here with the home icon, you'll notice that we've actually started creating a 3D model. And if we rotate this around, like we explained in the module of navigating the interface, we can see something happening. So we're starting to see a model developing. OK, let's complete the walls for this level and the next level and the floors. And then we will um, pause there and then create a second video for this module. Otherwise, it's going to be too much to fit into one time slot. OK, so we still need a wall here at that 1.91 meter offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the wall tool again. I'm going to use the pick tool this time, and I'm going to use an offset here of 1910. And I'm going to click towards the inside. So it's in the center, close to the grid, but on the right hand side to then create that wall offset. And look at that. We've created that wall. I press escape twice to exit the command and I click on the wall again to see that parametric distance. And look, we've got 1785 and we want it 1.91 meters. So I'm going to change that 1910 and look at that wall moving across, obeying the parameters that we entered there. And this is really why this is such a great package to use. It's parametric, it's smart, and it allows us to visually and dynamically update things on the fly. OK, so now we've got our walls in. Let's create the ground floor slab. OK, so we're going to click on the floor tool. And we're going to choose architectural floor. Notice when we start with this family, a contextual ribbon appears. The rest of the model kind of becomes grayed out, and we're in the sketching environment. So we're going to be sketching the boundary lines of our floor. I'm going to use the line tool, and I'm going to start sketching. So I want this to be on the inner face of the wall, so I make sure that I select that inner face, and we're going to start drawing this in. We will have a staircase later on, but that staircase is not going to cut through the ground floor. It's going to cut through the first level floor, so we are okay to continue and draw out our floor here. And let's assume that the little 
um, outside patio here is on the same level, which it normally wouldn't be. There'd be a, a weather step, but for the purpose of this exercise, we'll just assume that it's on the same level. So, um, oops, I missed that endpoint there. So what I'm going to do is press escape twice. I'm going to select the line so I can get that grip, and I'm going to drag it to snap it to that endpoint. Okay, so that happens a lot. You might click in the wrong location. You don't panic, you don't exit the command, you don't undo necessarily. You can just exit the current command by pressing escape twice. You can select something and you can drag those again into position. Okay, there's one little thing here that is important. You'll notice that we've got this double line here on the first line that we've drawn in. So by default, the first line you draw in becomes the, the span direction. Now, this is not correct. The span direction will be in the shorter distance. So I'm going to click the span direction tool, and I'm going to select any line that is pointing in that direction. It could have been this line also. That's just indicating the direction of the span of this floor. Um, and that, you know, it's not going to make a difference to the visual component of the floor, but just for modeling accurately and for downstream processes, such as, you know, porting this to a structural floor and sending it for structural analysis, or if this was a joist a gridded floor, then you know we want to know what direction the main joists or grids are going to be running. So it's important to set this up correctly from the beginning. And you can see we've got a ground, you know, suspended floor component here selected from our component selection. So we're going to just keep that as the default. We're going to click OK, and you'll see that the floor has been created. So again, if we access our 3D view, we can see now we have a floor. Great. Let's add the foundations. <laughs> now, normally you can do that in your level view or your plan view. I'm just going to do it straight here in the 3D view. And for this one, we're going to go to structures and we're going to choose the structural wall foundation tool. Again, we've got the type selector here. Um, why can't I see different types? Let's see what happens when we place our foundations. Okay, I'm just going to select them one by one, and we will add those foundations there. And if we select them afterwards, we can see there is our wall foundation that's been created. Okay, so here they are. We can see there's the properties. If we go to edit type here, we should be able to change the size. So if we wanted to change just the width there, or we wanted to change the foundation thickness, we can change that here in the type properties. Notice that it's got a name here. We can always duplicate this and we can rename it to something else if we want to create a new family type. Remember, um, in the previous modules, we spoke about the family types and the instance and the type properties. So this is where that comes into play. So if this foundation didn't have this, the desired size that we wanted. We can go here to edit type and we can change that. So we can say, no, we want to duplicate this. We want to call it something else. Let's call this strip footing um, and we make this one 800 by 350 that that's going to be the name but we're also gonna oops we're also going to do that here in the value so we're going to 800 by 350 and we're going to choose apply and okay and that's going to update the foundations that has got that name why did these ones not change because this is still the standard we've only selected this one and changed it to the new footing type so what i'm going to do so I'm going to select any of the remaining ones that's still on the old family type. I'm going to right click and choose select all instances visible in view. Look at that. So very quickly, I've selected all of the other foundations that match this one. And in one go, I'm going to change all of their parameters by just selecting the one that we've edited from the type selector. And now all of them will be the same size. OK, so now we've created that. Let's go back to level one, and I think we're done here for now. We still need to add stairs and openings for windows and doors and things like that, but for now we're done with level one, uh, level zero, the ground level. So let's go up to the next level, which in this case is level one, and we're going to start modeling in those, addition, uh, those, those first floor walls. Okay. So from here, we can see that we've got 3.67 meters width of this room. And then we've got a wall running all the way down from the top to the bottom. So 3.67 meters. So all we need to do again is we're going to go to architecture, choose wall. We're going to pick the pick tool. And what did we say? 3670. So we're going to change the offset here to 3670. 
you know, we, we're going to make sure that it goes from level one up to level two with no offset at the bottom because now it doesn't need a foundation. And we're going to offset that towards the inside. And let's see what happens with this value. See that it's giving us a distance to this inner wall here. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on that grip and I'm going to move that witness line to the inside of this wall. You see, and now we've got this parametric distance here that we can change. Three, six, seventy is what we wanted. And when I do that, it's going to give me exactly that distance. So again, you know, easy to accurately model that. And we can change the relationship rather than having a relationship between this wall and this wall. We now have one between this wall and this wall, giving us that accurate measurement. OK, so that provides the wall that runs through here. Now we need one splitting these into two bedrooms. So we've got a distance of 2.67 there. So again, I'm going to go use my wall tool. I'm choosing pick and we're going to go enter 2670 here. And I'm going to pick to place that wall. It's taking it all the way through, which is not what we want, but that's OK. Uh, let's make this 2670. And I'm going to use the grip point. You see there's a grip point at the wall end. And I'm going to drag that back to snapping to that wall. And look at how beautifully it, it automatically clears that up. And let's just see for reference what we've got. So here we've got 1.985, and here we've got 2670. So there is 2670. There's two meters worth. We've got 1.985. So there's a 15 millimeter difference. That's OK. I'm pretty sure this is not so accurately anyway. But that's pretty close. Um, so it's telling us we are on the right path. That also gives us the line that runs through to the edge of the staircase. And it's interesting because we see the stairs coming up here and the entrance is there. OK, that's good. That's good to know. All right, now we need to offset the next part. So we're going to find this line here. And that is at 2.42 meters. So I'm going to use the wall tool. We're going to use the big button and 2420. Uh, we're going to offset that. We know it's not going to be the right inner distance, but we're going to fix that. So 2, 4, 20. And we've got that distance there. And then we should have a remaining distance here of 2.98 meters. And we've got a little bit more than that, quite a bit more than that. I'm wondering why that would be 2.98. I think we entered all of these correctly. So do we have 3.67 meters here? We've got 2.4 meters there, 2.42, uh, which is from this side to that side. Um, yes, it must be. And then we've got 2.98 meters here. But according to this, we've got 3.39 meters. OK, not sure why such a big difference. But again, these measurements might not be as accurate as we would like for them to be. Let's just keep it the way it is. All right, this is the main bedroom anyway, so um, that should be all good. All right, then we can see that on top of this existing wall at the bottom where we've got the staircase, we've got this wall closing up the room and running through all the way there with the built-in closet. So we're going to be dragging this wall back. It needs to come back to this edge. And then we're going to have a wall sitting from, from there. All the way back to there okay so let's draw that in so we're going to go wall we're going to draw one this time and we're going to draw it right from here to there then we're going to take this one and we're going to drag it back to that end again nice rivet does all the work for us closing those edges and joining them together we have an offset here um, and that should be 2.71 meters that distance uh no Actually, it wouldn't be. That's too much. That 2.71 is probably from here to there. So let's see where that puts us. Let's create a wall there of 2.71. 2.710. And we're going to offset that from here. Yep, that puts us exactly there, which is what we expect. And that's going to be the shower. So if we go back here, press escape twice, of course, to exit the command. I'm going to trim this back. I'm going to trim this back. And now we've got that wall in there. And we come around here. Um, we've got the bedroom there. We still need this wall over here. OK, so we have 
Ah, I see what's gone wrong here. We don't, we've got this huge area here, but we don't have the bathroom space of 2.42 meters in here. So this distance here, I did something wrong and now I have to figure out what. This distance here is 2. Point, okay, so 2.98 meters. Let's do that quickly. I'm going to create a temporary line. So I'm going to use my uh, annotation tools. So I went to annotate and I select detail line. And what I want to do is I just want to draw in some quick CAD lines and I'm going to offset them by using the copy tool so I can see where they are, where they end up. So 2.98 meters. So we're going to go 2.980. Okay, so that's the first line. And then from there, 2.42 meters. So if we go here, 2420, that's going to create another one there. Okay, so that means for this to be in the correct location for our master bedroom, we need to be moving this wall to this location. Okay, now we've got this wall coming down. And then we have a bathroom here of 2.42 meters, which will bring us to this location. So if we use our annotate tools, and I'm going to use the aligned dimension tool just to measure that, we can see that it is 2.42. But again, it looks like we've got a different distance here. That's quite interesting. Okay, so we need to figure this out. So we've got we've got here 2.42 and that will probably bring us to this edge. We don't know what this distance is here because this doesn't look like both of these are equidistant. Okay, so never mind that. Let's 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 put a best estimate in here. We know that at the bottom we've got the shower coming in. From the shower, it looks like we've got 2.42 meters till the end there, and this we know is on the inside. So yeah, definitely something wrong with the dimensions on that example project. But no worries, we're gonna figure it out between us anyway. Um, so let's place that there. Let's copy this across here. See where we end up. Yeah, of course, those don't marry up quite as nicely as we wanted to. <laughs> okay, so for the shower, we'll need some space coming in. And then we left this line going up for the bathroom. And it's going to cross cut here. Some. So we, we still need to enter this here. We don't know what that distance is. I know that a door is roughly 900 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of guess where that line is going to come in. So we need at least, let's say, a meter offset there for this wall. So let's take a meter offset. I'm going to go back to architecture. And we're going to create a wall. And we're going to do that by offsetting one meter. And we're going to use this line as our reference. OK, it's telling us some of the line that the walls here overlap. That's OK. And that's going to put us in line with the wall that we've got here anyway, which looks like it's a little bit offset from that view, but it's close enough for our purposes. And we're going to drag these across. OK. And then we need enough space here to be able to open a door. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to guess that that is a more or less a meter wide. So if we take a meter here and we offset a wall here and we trim these edges back to this point and this one to this point and close those up, we should have something very similar to what we've got here. And of course, this line has to go back there. Okay, I think we've got it. We're not going to be worried too much about modeling the um, internal built-in uh, cupboard space here. Um, we'll just assume that those um, we can do afterwards. Okay, and then one thing I missed to do that I just picked up was the final wall on this end. So again, I'm going to use my wall tools and we draw that in. This line actually does extend through and it opens up into that closet space there. Um, and this distance here does look less than that distance there. So without having the exact dimensions, it's a little bit difficult, but it looks like this wall is following the one at the bottom. And if we look at the bottom here, 
we can see that this space is just a bit more than a door and that one does look a little bit wider but the reason i say they should be similar is look at the stairs and how they're coming up here it's a bit weird right because uh, that's that's coming down it's going up this way so you're coming up the stairs here and up here yeah anyway doesn't matter we're going to leave it this way all right so we've got our ground floor layout and we've got our first floor layout here and if we look at the 3d model this is what we've currently got now just to make things a bit easier for us to see what's happening in our 3d view while we're developing i'm going to select any of the exterior walls then i'm going to right click and i'm going to choose override graphics and view and i'm going to choose by category okay and what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to set the transparency of the surface of all the elements of type wall to whatever value i set here and let's just choose a value somewhere close to or exactly 70 okay and that's going to make it transparent and now we can kind of see what's happening on the inside also which is a bit nicer and if we switch this to a shaded view then we can see those colors or if we wanted to put this to consistent colors then that's going to give us this kind of representation okay so now we can kind of see what's happening on the inside which is good all right if we go back to level one we can create our floor here between these two levels and we need to also allow some space opening here for the staircase um, that's coming up Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna go to the floor tool. We're gonna choose architectural floor and we're gonna use the boundary lines to draw in our floor boundary. All right, um, before we start, we're gonna change the type here. So we're gonna say this is an upper floor. It's not gonna be concrete. We're gonna do a timber um, and joist floor. So uh, once we've got it selected, we can start drawing this in. All right. So we've got a floor running across here and that might sit in the center there um, if we were to model a bit more realistic but for the purpose of this exercise we're going to assume it sits on the inside there we're going to um, create this void here for the staircase to come up and we know that the staircase comes to somewhere around here we're going to determine that more accurately later when we actually model the staircase but for now We'll just make a provision over there and we'll adjust it later if we need to okay so we're still following those lines and we're drawing this in here snapping to that point and snapping to this point again we don't want the span direction to be in the long direction we'll prefer preferably have that in the shorter span direction overall so if we select that it should create the wall it's going to ask us do we want walls the interior walls to it automatically automatically attach to the um bottom of this to the top of the slab and the walls at the bottom to the top of the slab yes we do because that means that they're going to connect really nicely and we can verify that by creating our first view so we're going to go to the view tab here i'm going to click on section and we're going to click and click again here at the bottom so we create a section view and then when i double click on that section header we can start to see the first section through our little apartment building um, it's on a scale of 1 to 50 which is good for me and I'm going to click on this button here that says hide the crop region so that I can actually see what's going on inside here we can see these walls nicely connect to the top of the floor these walls connect to the bottom of the floor and here we've got a void where that staircase is going to come in and we can see these lines which is the back end of that slab where it's cutting through again if we look at the location of the section marker that's where it sits it cuts through here and it looks all the way to the back and the same on level one by the way when you create section markers notice how you can switch them around and if i do that and i access the view we're going to see exactly the opposite but in the reverse direction because now we're looking at this view from left to right so the opening of the stairs is going to be on the right which we see here on the right and if we go back and flip this marker again it's going to sit on the left because now we're looking at this to in that direction right so again if we access this we can see now it's on the left again so dynamically updating 
really smart, really clever. Okay, I think that is enough for this session. We're not finished with the module yet, but we've created the walls and the floors and the foundation. And in the next module, we will start creating the stairs and placing furniture and walls and doors. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.